Alright folks, so in this video I'm going to show how I install Anderson power poles. And for this video we are going to use a 12 gauge wire that is an aluminum braided core. I don't need these eye rings on the end, these terminals, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut those off. Next I'm going to untangle this thing and uh, that proves to be more difficult than it should be. Almost got it. And we're back and untangled. Now I like to use heat shrink in cases like this to make sure that the wire stays together. So I'm going to put a piece down where the fuse is. This is a little longer than I need so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off and then place it on the wires. I forgot to mention that I prefer to use PowerWorks power poles. They are the original is my understanding. I also install this rubber boot on my power poles. They come with a pin that you can use to help hold them together, but I find that the rubber boot works much better. I also like to add some adhesive backed or adhesive lined heat shrink, and I put that on towards the terminal end of the power poles. And you'll see that later in this video. We need to strip the wires I use about a quarter of an inch uh, I'll strip off, maybe a little bit more. And it doesn't really matter. I'll show you how I tidy that up later in the video. And uh, these strippers uh, are terrible, so I need a new pair. And I've asked folks <laughs> for any uh, advice or input on a new pair of strippers. Uh, anything that you could recommend would be helpful, I would imagine. And we've had success. Now I like to twist the end of that wire nice and tight to make it go into the terminal end of the power pole. When you install Anderson power poles, I like to use the red on the left side with the terminal spoon facing down, as I just showed with that previously made power pole. That way, they're all universal and can make together correctly. This is the power pole terminal that I'm going to put on the end of the stripped wire. Just like that. Now when I use my power pole crimpers, I want to make sure that the spoon part of that terminal is facing down or else it won't crimp correctly. It's a little bit of a challenge to do this with a camera between your arms. But I insert that into the 15 amp bit because these are 15 amp power poles. And then I go ahead and I ratchet it down. And as you can see, I've got a pretty snug connection there. Now we're going to repeat with the negative side of the wire. Just like we did before, we insert the terminal into the 15 amp bit and ratchet down. And then we want to give it a quick test to make sure that it's on there snug, and it is. I like to apply just a little bit of heat shrink to the wires where they attach into the terminals. I do this for extra ruggedness and rigidity. I'm going to need my heat gun. I picked this up from Harbor Freight for about 10 bucks. Works fantastic. So what I want to do is carefully place this heat shrink in the correct location onto my wire ends. Oh, that one's trying to get away. Once they're on, I'm going to use the heat gun When you put these into the power pole housing, it will be a little bit of a snug fit, but with some determination, we'll get it in there. So again, I want to make sure that these are oriented correctly. So I'm going to make sure that the silver part, or the terminal connection at the bottom, aligns with the spoon on this terminal. And when I push these in, typically it clicks twice, and then that's how I know it's set correctly. I'm also going to give it a little bit of a tug to make sure that it's on there. And 
and you should be able to see the connection. Let's go ahead and do it for the negative side. Now the sides of these housings are slotted and it allows you to connect them together. Once this is done, I'm just going to test quickly to make sure that everything works. And it does. So I'm going to take the second heat shrink piece that I put on the wires, and I'm going to go ahead and use the heat gun to shrink that down and hold this housing together. Again, I break out my $10 heat gun from Harbor Freight and fire it up. Try to make sure that everything is straight. That way you get a nice clean look. Once this is done and cooled off, I'm going to move the rubber boot up the wire and onto the housing. It's going to be a snug fit, and I'm not going to lie to you, it's not exactly easy to do. But again, with some determination, we'll get the job done. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you don't push or pull too hard and damage the crimp that you put on the connectors. And now that we have the boot firmly in place, our Anderson power pole termination is complete. We're going to test one last time to make sure everything works. And it fits together just fine. And that's it folks. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, share, or subscribe. If you have any questions, you can post them below and I'll do my best to answer. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it.